Hello and welcome to the certificate course in counseling and psychotherapy with the Wellness Center. I'm your instructor Varuni Fernando. I will make a proper introduction when we meet in class in a couple of weeks. This introductory video is to give you an overview of counseling, how it evolved and why we need counseling. We could say that the Industrial Revolution, which took place between the mid-18th and mid-19th centuries, was a precursor to the activity that we call counseling today. During this time, there were many changes that happened in Europe and in the UK. It was a time of new inventions, mass productions, steam engines and factory lines. This was also a time when many people left their villages to go to the cities in search of work and better pay. When they left their community, unfortunately, they also left their support system, their families, friends and church. Whereas in the village, they, had, they all knew each other and took care of each other. In the city, people were strangers. In the city, populations grew, there was a problem of who will take care of those who fall by the wayside due to mental illness. Where can they go for help? In our first lecture, we will discuss the social and historical origins of counseling. Therefore, please take some time to read the material that is shared with you before you join the first lecture. In recent times, we have been presented with a number of definitions for counselling. Here is one from Feltham and Dryden in 1993. Counselling is a principal relationship characterised by the application of one or more psychological theories and a recognised set of communication skills, modified by experience, intuition and other interpersonal factors to clients' intimate concerns, problems, or aspirations. And another definition put forth by the American Counseling Association. Counseling is a professional relationship that empowers diverse individuals, families, and groups to accomplish mental health, wellness, education, and career goals. These definitions are informative and gives us a good understanding of what is involved. However, as we are involved with helping human beings, let's look at a more user-centered definition given by John McLeod in the Introduction to Counseling. Counseling is a purposeful private conversation arising from the intention of one person or a couple or family to reflect on and resolve a problem in living and the willingness of another person to assist in that endeavor. There are several key assumptions made in that definition. We will take one at a time. Number one is that counseling happens when a person who is troubled invites and allows another person to enter into a particular kind of relationship with them. Two, counseling is based on the foundational principle that people have the ability to talk things through and to generate new ideas through dialogue. Three, counseling depends largely on a relationship that is sufficiently secure to explore issues that are painful, shameful and troubling. Number four, counseling is a place where a person is encouraged to speak, where previously they may have been silenced. Number five, the counselor is willing to set aside their own ideas and opinions and positions on, with, on issues in order to focus as completely as possible on helping the client to articulate and act on their personal values and desires. Number six, 
the counsellor offers confidentiality and refrains from discussing clients with anyone. And number seven, the counsellor enacts and models a relationship based on core values, honesty, integrity, care, belief in the value of individual persons, and a sense of common good. And how does counselling help people? One way is through gaining insight, which is an understanding of the origins of emotional difficulties. Insight increases the capacity of the client to take rational control over feelings and actions. Another way that counselling helps is to relate better with others. We become better able to form and maintain meaningful and satisfying relationships with other people. For example, within the family, with friends, at the workplace, or even in school. We learn better interpersonal relationship skills through counselling. Another thing we learn is self-awareness, becoming more aware of thoughts and feelings that had been blocked off or denied, or developing a more accurate sense of how self is perceived by others. And we develop a positive attitude towards self, with a new ability to acknowledge areas in life that had been the subject of self-criticism and rejection. We also learn problem solving, finding a solution to a specific problem that the client had not been able to resolve alone, acquiring a general competence in problem solving. And the client also gains some knowledge in psychology, enabling the client to acquire ideas and techniques with which to understand and control behaviors. And then a client is empowered, working on skills, awareness and knowledge that will enable the client to take control of his or her own life. And finally, restitution. Counseling should help the client to make amends for previous destructive behaviours, if there were any. Beginning training in a new career is a big step and becoming a counsellor or psychotherapist involves significant investment both in terms of time and money as well as the emotional energy required. It may be useful to reflect on the following questions. Does counselling training fit into your existing set of skills or employment? If not, are counselling skills likely to enhance your work? If so, how? Have you ever been a client for counselling? If so, was this a positive experience? And what was particularly helpful? Have you ever thought of seeking counselling? If so, why? Is there a danger that you are considering counselling training instead of actually going to receive counselling yourself? Do you know what counselling and psychotherapy is? Have you done some research to find out more? Are you at a point in your life where you want or need a change in direction? Have you thought that being a counsellor would be worthwhile? Have you looked into the career prospects for counsellors? And so we have come to the end of our first introductory lecture. Take time to reflect on those questions and consider starting a journal to record your thoughts 
and reflections as you progress through this course. Read through the chapters that are essential reading for our first week. And I hope to see all of you in class soon.